and a man who knows about the Eastern Conference of Major League Soccer. Uh, he, he, is, uh, he is properly hydrated, I believe, and it's time to go fully loaded with our man. We're going to go live to Peru. I, I love to say that, by the way. Fully loaded, brother. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are fully loaded. Nino Torres here with you guys. Soccer down here. Thank you for having me, John. I I'm so pumped. I'm so energized, man. You know, because I'm back. Finally, I'm back. That's my first weekend in, um, on Gold TV last weekend. We got fully loaded with the uh, Portuguese Supply Division. Every single game on the network from the League of Portugal was on me. And uh, I got all the love from for all my Portuguese fans, man. I, I love them, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so pumped. I'm so happy. I'm all right. Today, man. You, well, we, we love having you as, as uh, part of the, the Power Hour with you and, uh, and our buddy Nico Moreno. Uh, I want to, you mentioned getting into, well, all right, fine. All right. So we'll start. You mentioned Portugal. Uh, when we get to discuss Portugal with you and Gold TV, there is a team that you like to talk about because of what they're doing, which is something really special with a dude that was in the championship and lighting it up at Coventry city, who is now lighting it up in Portugal and doing really good stuff for sporting. It is the Victor Jokeresh universe, and we are all just watching it in orbit of the whole thing. It is massive, man. I call him the Night King. For all, all of you Game of Thrones fans, you know when I mentioned the Night King, it's scary. This guy is scary, man. And uh, if you just to give you an idea, right? Just the, this season started, right? With Mbappé, and now you got Hendrik. And uh, guess who has more goals and more assists than, than those two guys? I'm guessing it's Victor Jokeresh. Ten goals, five assists. Ten goals, five assists. And we are September, brother. September. Just picture what this guy's going to do in March. He's going to be 40, 20. He's going to be like a Shohei Otani of soccer, man. All right? Going with a 40-50 thing. It's going to go like that, buddy. It's going to go like that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. By the way, I'm a big baseball fan of you. I think no, I'm a, I'm I'm big, I'm big, big, big baseball fan. So see, but see, but you but you bring up my you bring up my boy Otani. I'm an Angels fan, and all so right. for me to see Shoei, well, all right. So baseball down here, which normally runs at like three fifteen <laughs> on Wednesday morning. Um, he was a part. Yes, Otani and Trout, fantastic, right. love it, love it, love it. So Otani is going to be a free agent. Our owner is more than happy to just spend bad money over bad money, Artie Moreno. And so we're right there at the end of the trade window. And we're kind of hanging out in the wild card race at the time. They decide, no, we're going to hang on to Shoei Otani at the end of his contract and then, uh, not, and then not get anything for him. Literally, literally we're going to hang on to the guy. And then we're going to even add more people and not trade Otani, knowing he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year, and he's probably going to walk, and he eventually did. And we knew yeah. he was going to go up the five freeway to go be with the Dodgers. <laughs> and then, so what happens? Otani gets injured. The dudes that they bring in, they let some of them go in a salary dump 30 days later because we sucked and didn't get into the wild card. We're like 3-10 and 10 on the run-in. And just blew it all up. Otani leaves, goes up the five to the Dodgers, and we're just kind of sitting there twiddling our thumbs. And the owner says, you know what? I'm going to sell. And Angels fans are like, hella freaking Louia. And, <laughs> and then a month later, Moreno's like, nah, I think I'll hang on to the team. And we're all just sitting there going, dude. No. That's no. what, as an Angels fan with Otani, now that he's with the Dodgers and he's, what, 48 and 48 or whatever? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's so close to 50-50, man. He, he's he's going to do it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. And, and I my, didn't know you were a Vegas fan, man. I'm sorry, man. I, it's just it drives me crazy. So, uh, yeah. So you end up with uh, Victor Jokerish being the Shoei Otani of the Portuguese league. Uh, yeah. Where where do things stand right now in the standings uh, after this past weekend of your calls on Gold TV? Uh, the Portu uh, Sporting Club is five and zero. Oh. Five and zero, oh, man. All right, they're, they're not taking any prisoners, man. They're just running over people. They're destroying teams on the road. All right. So out of these out of these five games for, for sporting, they play three games away, away from the Avalade. 
and they won any anyways, man. And they, this is uh, this is all right. I've been calling this league for six years now, yeah. right? And um, every year it, it was the, uh, the 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 two kings of Portugal, Porto and Benfica, Benfica and Porto trading, you know, trading tournament championships. But then the uh, it, they call it the big three, right? With, with Sporting, but Sporting hasn't had a uh, uh, championship years for. 20 years, all right? So last last the championship was in uh, 2002, and then they won 19 years later in 2021. But they, they won again last year, and uh, they are on the verge, they are on route to win by, I want to say, a long, long distance on this championship. I was, I'm, I'm talk, I got a, we got a podcast with the guys in uh, Tuga Tuesday. I'm talking with the uh, guys from a uh, representative from Sporting club one from Benfica, one for Porto, right? And and the uh, and the sporting guy, he's always kind of nervous. You know, don't say this, don't say that we want to win, please. Because what if we don't win? Well, what happened last season, man? What did I tell you last season? In you know, round three, I was well, I was calling the games, and you know, by round three, I, I was like, all right, these guys, they're gonna win the championship. Don't say that, you know, you're gonna jinx it, because he uh, he has a reason for that. Because all that 19 year span of without any titles, at least in seven, seven seasons, they were leading and they'll derail at the end of the season. They got, they, I forgot how they say, how, how is the saying? They got a saying in, in, in Portugal, that like uh, Sporting for Christmas, uh, Porto in February, and then Befica end up winning the championship. They, they, I don't know how it works, but I, they know that. Uh, uh, sporting club always runs on gas at the end of the season. It's not the same. It's not. It's just a different era. And and sporting club changed everything when they hired Ruben Amorim back in 20, uh, 2019, 2020, during the pandemic. Yeah, the pandemic years when, when they signed uh, Ruben Amorim. The guy changed the mentality of these teams. Of these teams, he he is. Uh, He's a coach that has also loves to promote young young talent. By the way, talking about young talent, Sporting Club is the youngest. They have the youngest roster. Also, twenty three point four years average. Twenty three. All right. Okay. Okay. So and, and they're leading, and they're they got this. I forgot how many goals they score already. It was, I think it's nineteen. At least nineteen and. Four. That's the uh, 19 goals score and uh, four conceded. Uh, uh, two conceded. Only twice. Only twice in five games, man. So that that's how good this team is. And they got to have that awesome start of the Champions League. In um, but they got a top group. They got a top group. They got to go with City. They got to go. Yeah, they got a top group in uh, in the Champions League, man. But for Sporting Club is the. Uh, they're leading the revolution in Portugal. Okay. Since you mentioned him, let's go over Champions League results so far because we've got another we got another six pack coming up uh, in a couple hours. So day one, Celtic puts up another a number on Slovan Bratislava, no shock. Dortmund put three up on Bruges uh, just yesterday. Manchester City and uh, and Inter. Was a plus four hundred five for, uh, for a draw. It was a goalless draw. Kevin De Bruyne injured concerns, especially with Arsenal coming up this weekend. PSG beats Girona as a favorite. Bologna and Shakhtar goalless draw. I dig Shakhtar's Ukraine colors jerseys. I'm it's going awesome. to I'm going, to I'm going to the poorhouse when I pick that up. And Sparta Prague beats Salzburg three nil. Then day one, Liverpool put three on AC Milan at Milan. Bayern put nine. I watched that one. Bayern puts nine on Dinamo Zagreb. Real Madrid three one over Stuttgart. Sporting two nil over Lille at home at a minus one ninety two. Juve beat PSV three one. Aston Villa Unai Emery one fifty a minus one fifty nine. They got the win. So of those two match days, before we get into today, what has stuck through your head, including Sporting's two nil win? Um. I got this image of of Hendrik entering for Real Madrid, and uh, I, I said that this kid is 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 gonna be a bust, right? I said it, and probably I, I I'm gonna 
Probably not like eating my words at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> the kid is, he doesn't care, man. He, he is so fresh. And uh, there's that. Do you, that, do you see his goal? No. Mm-mm, I did not. All right, this, this is a massive counterattack. He grabs the ball in his own box, runs for 65 yards, has Mbappé on the left, has the, the Beanie on the right. And what are the kids does? Oh, no, I'm going to take it on my own. All right. <laughs> Boom. Put it in the back of the net. And there's the image. You got you to gotta watch him. Mean, you got to search for Google it for uh, through Mbappé reactions to Hendrik. Because Mbappé is like, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> and then he sees him scoring. And Mbappé's like, yep. All right. All right. Okay, kid. All right. Got you, fam. You know? mm-hmm. All right. I like it. I like that. I like that he takes chances. And uh, he's, 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 he's the Mbappé. All right. This guy is, is I want to say, he is the next on the throne. Okay. Of soccer around okay. the world. All right. He finally came to the Casablanca. He's going to win the Champions League. Well, finally. <laughs> and then and then he's going to go to uh, to the U.S., Canada, Mexico World Cup with that anxious, with that thirsty for revenge like no other player in the, on the planet. Okay. And you, right. you you dig this format. You you don't you just like you could yes. go into the group stage, huh? I was totally against it because it was confusing, right? We got all this, you know, oh, you got to play eight games and then the four, and then the four left, and then like, right. but then you realize that uh, there's no, it's just you got to go all in on every single game. You don't save anything for later. Yeah. And that makes it more special. That makes it more competitive. That makes it more exciting to watch because if you, if you play Real Madrid once, all right, like it happened seasons before like the, when they play this um this team from cyprus right uh fc chipol and then and um and then being in real madrid in the uh in the first leg and then of course real madrid went in the second leg and destroyed it yeah but what if they what if real madrid didn't have that second chance right now you don't so if you gotta you're gonna see more offsets all across the board on their under this new format because there's no payback time yeah. There's no, I want to say, oh, you beat me here. I want to see you at my place. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I beat you. I beat you once. And I can say that I beat Real Madrid. I can say that I beat Bayern Munich. I can say that I beat Manchester United. I can say that. And, uh, and then the next one. And then, then and the next one. It's just, it, uh, it's, it's more fun. It's more exciting. It is. And, uh, and so, I, you know, I get it. Today is, uh, and now you've got three days worth of matchups. And then you'll, yes. event, you'll, you'll end up. <laughs> You'll end up throwing it against the uh, the Europa League and the Europa Conference League, and so you're going to have like nine thousand matches going on at the same time today. <laughs> today, uh, Red Red you got so many Red Stars hosting Benfica. Benfica is a minus one hundred eight. Come That's, on, Eagles! Come on! I got to take care of business, right? All right, this 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 guy in, in Benfica it is crazy. They just signed. You just signed him because uh, Bruno Lage returned to to the pickup. They firing Roger Smith after the full round, and um, and by the way, Bruno Lage was one the last one to win back to back titles in Portugal. Yeah. So uh, they brought him back, and he signed this this kid. Uh, let me see if I can get his name right this time. This Kevin Arthur Koglu. It's a Turkish guy from Galatasaray. Came into the to the Premier League uh, first game, goal and assist, dominated the scene, and that's exactly what Benfica needed. And then that's the power that they need on top. They got uh, a, a Pavlidis, the uh, goal scorer from HC Altmar. He scored 29 goals in 34 rounds last season for uh, uh for AC Altmar in the uh, in the Eredivisie. He, he's kind of kind of slow start, but uh, I, I got faith in the uh. And the big man for uh, for Benfica, and of course with Angelito de Maria, with uh, Prestiani, with uh, with uh, Benjamin Rolaser, they got an uh, Argentine uh, Argentine uh, path there for for Benfica that uh, could be interesting this season, man. Feyenoord is a dog at home against Bayer Leverkusen. No surprise. That's minus one forty-seven. Atalanta at, is hosting Arsenal. 
Arsenal's <laughs> minus 116. That's that that one could be dicey. Your draws a plus yeah. 279, especially with Manchester City coming up this weekend for uh, Mikel Arteta and Arsenal. Uh, how, how, much is, how much is Atalanta, John? How much is Atalanta? In the composite, you, you throw all of your juice boxers together. It's a plus 332 to win outright. I'm going to take my chances in Atalanta. Oh. I'm going to take, take my chances on Gasperini, Bobby. Okay. <laughs> oh, I right. uh, trust this guy, man. He's, he's so right. smart. One of the smartest coaches in the planet, man. Gasperini. Yep. All right. Uh, Atleti at home is a minus 130 hosting uh, RB Leipzig. Brest, even money, hosting Sturm Graz at a plus seven, <laughs> And uh, Barca on the road, a minus 149 at Monaco. Monaco is a plus 383, and your draw is a plus 338. No, can't see Flick, boys. They're going to take it. They, they, he, he's, he's getting this team wrong. He's, uh, he's taking Barcelona out of that uh, winter sleep that had been for – for I don't know how long now since Messi left, basically. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and they're still trying to figure out how to make ends meet, and it's like uh, the old the old cartoon character from the Popeye cartoon. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. You put spot. Tell you what, I'll sell my TV studio. I'll sell the, the naming rights to the stadium to Spotify and have a big Spotify logo right in the middle of my of my uh, my jersey. But yeah, no, that'll be cool. That's fantastic. I'll dig that. Just pay me now at pennies to the dollar so I can try and make ends meet and we'll still try and not sign players. So uh, yeah. keep an eye on Barcelona and FFP. Uh, gee, I wonder I wonder how they, they'll make ends meet. Mm. And if mm. Mm. Uh, we got Libertadores and Sudamericana, pick one. Hey, Libertadores. Libertadores. Right. Libertadores, yes, sir. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Pin it all, please. Pin it all, baby. <laughs> Bring the good old days back. I want to see Pin it all and real played in the finals. That's what I want to see. Ooh. That's what I want to see. That's my, my, my soccer wish for the season. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but uh, hey, hey, if Pin it all beats Flamengo, if Pin it all beats Flamengo, Mm-hmm. Flamengo is a minus. Nobody stop. I'm gonna put it like this. Yeah. If they beat, if they get out of this series, Pino is gonna win it. All right. Listen, Pino is gonna win it if, if they, they didn't need to pass the, the overpass Flamengo first. All right. Let, let's see what happens on this series. But if they if they beat Flamengo, I think we're gonna enter a new era in Commonwealth Americana. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. uh, we'll see Flamengo, what happens, man. Flamengo's a minus 196 tonight. They're a minus 196. Panyarol, do if you're if you're all in on Panyarol, Panyarol is a plus 636 in the composite. Man. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go crazy, man. I probably I should get any beers before I put my my uh, my bets, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh draws a plus two eighty eight. Uh, next week before we uh, to draw tonight, draw tonight is a plus 288. Uh, All right. Then the other matchups before we get to shake hands once again a week from today, River Plate favored right now at home, and that is on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, River Plate favored at home, a minus 204 as Colo Colo comes to visit. Wednesday, you're back-to-back. Atleti? Minus 123 at home against Fluminense. Fluminense is a plus 325. Sao Paulo, a plus 150, hosting Botafogo and uh, our boy Tiago Almada at a plus 196. Your draw is a plus 212. Mm. All right. I'll, I'll take Sao Paulo. I'll take Flu. That's what I take. I'll okay. Go. So sorry. So you're going with the slight favorite in Sao Paulo, but it's still on the plus side. So you still can you still yeah. can come out with some uh, with some uh, with some coinage, and you're going with the big dog Fluminense on the road at Atleti. Oh hey yeah, heck yeah. They, 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 uh, you know what? After what I what I saw um, what, what I saw last night from from Atletico Mineiro, uh, they they they're having issues, man. They are having issues in that locker room. Uh, Hulk was walking out, out of the pitch, and then one of the players was recriminating, and then the other player from behind 
fight, fought against this guy, and the Colt was talking to the other guy, and uh, it, the, the aura, all right, the energy of that locker room, it doesn't give me good vibes. Okay, you know, when you're when you're you're not together as a as a brotherhood, it, it's, it's it's hard to it's hard to advance and and to achieve your goals, man. Amen. Uh, Gold TV's Nino Torres. We can say that. Gold TV, yes, sir. Nino dropping by as we are fully loaded uh, on the power hour here on Thursdays. Our buddy Nico Moreno set to join us in about five to ten minutes. It's whenever Nico can get his second or third cup of coffee and his rave green mug and be ready to go. Uh, Sudamericana tonight. Two games starting at the same time. Uh, yeah. so it's a uh, Atletico Paranaense favored at home on the plus side against Racing Club at a plus 118. Draw tonight is a plus 223. Racing Club, a plus 234. Libertad Asuncion hosting Crucero. Crucero, slight favorite on the road. Libertad is a plus 196 at home. Draws a plus 186. Crucero is a plus 166 in the composite. Anything? I think on that one, on that one, I think it's going to be a draw. I, I love Libertad, but I, I think they, they, they lack in that uh, that killing instinct. So I, I don't know if they, but you never know in Paraguay. When you go to Paraguay, anything will happen, especially with Libertad and, and Olympia. It's, it's, um, they're, they're hard to beat. They're, they're really, really hard to beat in, 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 in Paraguay. In um, Racing, Racing, the Colombians, those two Colombians with Juan Pergintero, with Martinez, with Manavilla Martinez, that offense for Racing, I'll take Racing. I'll take Racing on that one. Okay. I'll take Racing on that one. That's the dog at plus 234. Then once again, Tuesday night, Corinthians and Fortaleza. Fortaleza right now, slight favorite on the road at a plus 152. Corinthians a plus 170. On Tuesday night only, draws a plus 222. Wednesday, Independent uh, Independiente Medellin, a plus 173 at home against our boys from Lanús. Lanús a plus 158. Your draw is a plus 220. So Lanús favored on the road at Independiente Medellin. Fortaleza yeah. a road favorite on Tuesday night as well. You got some road fa- – three of these four have road favorites attacked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, but the only one that is – I don't think it's going to be a favorite is uh, for me. Uh, I think Corinthians is going to take it on that one. Okay. Corinthians is going to take it on that one. I'm so happy uh, – please, I'm so happy that my Peruvian boy – is back. Andre Carrillo came out of the freaking uh, Saudi Arabia world. You know, he <laughs> ran away from the money. There was, he didn't run away. They ended his contract. That's that's the truth of the matter, right? Yeah. Like, I just want to say like that. Because it sounds yeah. Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, you know. And um, But I'm so happy. I'm so happy he's playing now. And in, uh, he didn't come to any other team. He came to Corinthians. All right, it's, 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 a, it's a big dog in Brazil, all right? You got Ramon Diaz there. You got Memphis Epe coming, too. So um, I think Corinthians is, uh, could be a surprise. Huh? Could be uh, could be in the finals. I put Corinthians in the finals for that's American, I'm telling you. Yeah, uh, I, I say uh, our friends at uh, Lanus because uh, our buddy Marcelina Moreno, who was uh, here at Atlanta United, is a uh, part of that roster at Lanus. And, so and they won already one so many guys. Yeah, and, and, and so any, any chance we have to sit there and go, it's like, yeah, we're going to follow Botafogo because of our guy Tiago Almada. Yeah, we're going to look at Lanus because of our guy Marcelina Moreno. We're always going to drift into those kinds of things. Yes, it is. Uh, it is. All right, I'm looking, I'm looking at your shopping list. Uh, of what you wished to discuss. And uh, there, there's one thing here on the list. There, there's uh-huh. one thing, there was one thing here on the shopping list that we have yet to discuss. And I'm, and I'm loosening up for it, uh, making sure that, that my, my ears are ready, that I'm, that I'm ready to listen, that I'm ready to sit there and, and find out what's going on in your brain. Uh, so I'm looking at the shopping list. Libertadores, check. Yeah. yeah. Sudamericana, check. Champions, I love the new format, check. Yokoresh, and you got the two accent marks on the E in Yokoresh on the on the uh, on the on the text, which I thought was very very clever, uh, and the Sporting CP Portugal Revolution. There, there's one, there's one, there's one thing left here on this shopping list that you sent me, and, and I'm and I'm getting ready for it because I'm just gonna let I'm gonna wind you up and let you go. 
And of course, my Universitario en route to a championship on their 100-year anniversary. I got bonus track from last night, fully loaded, baby. That's what he sends me. <laughs> yes, sir. Because uh, I got to call, I got to call my uh, my Universitario de Portes last night. My friend, my first game back with the Liga Uno, and uh, it, it was a it was a massive match. It was a must-win victory for um game for um. Because the rivals, their arch rival Alianza Lima was on top of the standings. But guess what happened earlier yesterday? They lost on the road on a late penalty. Late penalty. So we were okay. <laughs> they lost. We're coming after you, baby. We are coming after you. You don't slip points when we are behind you. When were you when we're reading on your neck? You better bring your A game. I stay focused 100% of time for every single game. Because it did the slightest hiccup when I we're gonna come after you. All right. So when I'm winning three nil with authority, it, it, it was absolutely beautiful. And uh, I gotta tell you this, yeah, last year we won the championship at their stadium, right? And you know what they did? Yeah, did I tell you what they did? Mm. And um, all right, all right, so we won the championship, right? As soon as the final whistle, right, five seconds after the final whistle, they turn the lights off on the stadium. Whoa! So we cannot get our Olympic round around the stadium. Wow. They turn off the lights wow. of the stadium. They denied the victory lap. Yes. Wow. So since then, <clears throat> They've been a they've been a joke, of course, right? <laughs> it's, a, we call it, it's, it's, it's a power outage, right? But we call it in in Spanish is el apagón, mm -hmm. all right? And there's a song about the apagón, right? And that we uh, Universitario fans embraced. And last night, last night, I was calling the game and I started <laughs> hearing the song from the fans. So. Uh, here we go. Oh no, he's got it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Jack it up for me. <laughs> uh, I'm just staring at the look on your face. I threw the song out there, man, with the fans. Oh my god, that's fantastic! Uh, and, and just just as important uh, as you're discussing uh, uh, Universitario, did I notice behind you? Did I notice a studio audience behind you wandering around this morning? Did, did behind you on the floor? Did I notice a studio audience? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here. He's always here. Where is he? I, I was, uh, see, this is the first time that we will have seen, as he unplugs his camera, uh, the, the studio audience that is there. He unplugs his camera. Hey, wait, here we go. Oh, all right. So, wait, all right. All right. So, all right. So, there you are. So, you can go grab, you can go grab it. You can go grab the studio audience. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead and put your headset down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and put your headset down. We are dog friendly here. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Right there. I can hear you now. Look at that. Look at this guy. Who is, who is that? It's Stuffy. Stuffy. I forgot. Next time I'm going to get he got his university title gear or two. Oh. You know? And he's looking at you like, dude, why did you pick me up? I was sleeping. Yeah, but he's fine. And he's so cool because he stays quiet during my broadcast now. So like he always stays quiet. Right? He's he's your he's your he's your producer. He's your on site producer. Yes, yes. Oh uh, he, he's like, Can you put me back to bed now? It's like yes, bruh, yes. bruh <laughs> I'm done. Oh, that's fantastic. He's like, he picked me up. I was sleeping. He picked me up. Why did he do this to me? <laughs> it's like, put me back down now. 
And, and so uh, our, our buddy Alex uh, Alex Pacine says, "Hola, perito, I love you. <laughs> I just met you." So uh, thanks, man. Thanks, you, Alex. Appreciate you, it, man. You have absolute fans already. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, oh, um, uh, you mentioned League of One results. Uh, Universitario three nil over Sport Boys. Sport Boys, by the way, were a plus ten forty one on the on the grid. Uh, Cienciano beat uh, Sport Huancayo as a favorite at a minus one fifty four. Comerciantes Unidos over Cesar Valle- Vallejo uh, as a as a home dog. And you mentioned yeah. Grau and Alianza Lima uh, on uh, the the one nil. So the standings in in uh, Liga One uh, after eleven matches. Uh, Universitario, 24 points. Alianza Lima at 23. Uh, Sporting Cristal and Cusco at 21 points. And uh, Mel Garcianciano at 19. Grau is 7th at uh, 18. And then you have Tarma, Deportivo, Garcilaso, Alianza, Sport Huancayo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right, right. So you're about a third of the way through your schedule, and you're calling your shot that your boys are going to go ahead and win the title, especially when Alianza Lima loses like they did to Grau, who is 4-6-1, and by the way. Yeah, uh, it's like bruh in the cloud in the cloud, sir. Yeah. Mm. And they were one of the worst uh, home teams. They 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 Brown was horrible playing at home, horrible playing at home. And they were uh, the alias. You know what's the problem? You know what? This is the thing. Why I I, I really I'm not gonna say hate because I don't hate anybody. I, I really don't like the Atlanta Lima fans. They're so obnoxious. Oh God, do you think that they're picking Real Madrid? They haven't won a single game in Copa Libertadores for 10 years. And um, and they thought, like, yeah, we're the kings of the hill. And like, boom, there you go. <laughs> when you when you uh when you say stuff like that, then, then that's when you get bit. Uh Alian Zalim, by the way, they're on the road at Sport Boys this weekend. Uh, actually, in two days on Saturday, they're the late game on Saturday. Alian Zalim is a minus one sixty one. Sport Boys are a plus four twenty nine. And Universitario gets to kind of watch next couple of days. They're going to watch everything else going on around them. Uh, let's see. What else is on your mind as your beloved Columbus crew have a match in hand and are a part of the street fight in the Eastern Conference? Uh, last night, uh, our number one, uh, Messi and friends came into town. And the $13 million purchase for Atlanta United, Alexi Miranchuk from uh, Atalanta, scored the equalizer, 2-2 draw in front of 60,000-plus uh, downtown. Uh, I still maintain that it's nights like last night lean to me why Columbus crew is the best team in major league soccer and will come out of the Eastern conference and not Messi and friends. Cucho and Cucho we trust in Cucho we trust, man. I'm telling you, Cucho now this, I, I love him and, uh, I really hope, I really hope that they can win the title this year, man. And uh, even even when 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 I, I said last year that that Messi and and Combine uh, they were going to win it all, but uh, you gotta take the uh, you gotta remember he's human and he got injured, mm-hmm. he got injured, and then when you when you get injured, there's nothing that you can do about it. You just gotta rest. And uh, how many games he was out? Like a lot, like four, right? How many so games? He was? Messi was out for I think thirteen. <laughs> 13 matches? Yeah, he's out for two months. All comps, yeah. 13. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. Yeah, after, after he got yeah, – yeah. after, after that large ankle that we saw at the end of Copa America, ever since then, he's been recovering, and uh, he had – he's had – he had his uh, – played 90 on the weekend against Philly. Then he played 30 last night. Because it's three matches in a week for Messi and friends, they head to, to a Yankee Stadium to take on NYC, and they're the early game Saturday afternoon. So last night against Atlanta United, uh, Suarez on the bench to start, Messi on the bench to start, uh, and Jordi Alba on the bench to start. So it was a unique line. And Tata Martina was out on yellow card accumulation, so Jorge Teeler was uh, on the touch line. So it was uh, it was an interesting lineup. They got a one lead. Atlanta United came back to tie it at one. Then, uh, like three minutes later, off a deflection on a set piece, two one, and then Miranchuk scored with about uh, ten to go to tie it at two. And the last thirty minutes was absolute chaos. You know what? It, it is since we're talking MLS. It is that time. It, it, it is that time for the last half hour of Thursday, where we have the melding of minds. 
We have the Twitch pitch staring at this harmonic convergence <laughs> of all of these different zones coming together. And as I stare in the green room, I see someone who is all business. He is in business attire today. He okay. ain't he ain't wearing the lid. He might have the rave green mug and might be on cup of coffee number three. We will check this out. But we have to roll the special open because that's what we have. Because we are going to add to the discussion for the handoff. Our buddy Nico Moreno from Pulso Sports and the Soccer Bar. So special open. Here we go. Street fight coming right at you. Two, three, four. The melding of minds and the handoff on Thursday. We were discussing Major League Soccer and Nino Torres' beloved Columbus crew. We bring in Nico Moreno from Pulso Sports and the Soccer Bar to discuss everything. So I will put it to the table. Nino, to continue your education as to what's going on while you're focused in Portugal and the Bird of Doris and Sudamericana and everything, Gold TV, question that you have for Nico Moreno on the handoff. What is your question, sir, about Major League Soccer? Mr. Mr. Moreno, good morning, first off. First off, all right. So what, what are your chances uh, for your team this year? What, what, are, what are the chances for your Seattle Sounders? Well, first of all, good morning. Always a pleasure to have you join us or well, to join John. I'm just here just visiting, uh, but always uh, fantastic to have you. Yes, uh, by the way, John, you're right on. This is cup number three of Joe. And I think you, you finally hit. You finally hit. I mean, you know, I got here about midnight from the Sounders game. I had to watch uh, some games because I always got to watch at least 90 minutes of at least three games. So it was a it was a, a rough night. Got about two hours of sleep. But to your question, Nino, chances of, I'm guessing, getting a title or getting to a final, uh, there aren't many, uh, to be honest. Uh, this team yesterday proved what I've been saying here over the last couple of weeks, that there are times where results can be outliers. There are times the results can hide some of the realities of a team. And last night was, was part of it, right? You played the... A, a team that's eliminated, uh, the the worst team in MLS, if you will, and you are in command. 2-0, a brace from Jordan Morris. Uh, you think that you have the game under control, but in a combination of missed opportunities, a team that I felt pulled their foot off the gas and substitutions by Brian Smetzer that I think told the team Let's hold the ball. Let's just hold on to this score. It did not go their way because all it took was you were already um, in a game where you started off in the wrong foot. Quakes get the first goal. Then you get the brace. So you you, you kind of match, match it up. You're, you're up to one. They were the better team in the first 45. But then after that, you just won goal from an equalizer. So you need to finish the game. And that was never intended in that second half. I think that they had plenty of opportunities. And I don't want to put it all on Brian. Josh Atencio, he has a play where he, from midfield, goes all the way down, coast to coast, to uh, the other side, final third, makes a wrong decision. Jordan Morris gets a... One on one against the goalkeeper misses. This. There were so many missed opportunities by the individuals on the field, but Brian needs to do a little more. Raul Ridiaz was sitting on the bench waiting to come on. In the post conference, Brian Smetzer said, "You know, where were the experienced guys that could have made this game, uh, put it away, held the ball, all these things? Well, you had experience on the bench, and you decided not to use it." Uh, you brought in uh, Manungu and um, Reed Baker Wyden, which I understand why you you wanna you want the speed, you want the velocity. Uh, he talked about transition moments, which they did have, but there are times where you have to make substitutions early enough to kill the game and not to just manage it and hold it. And that's why at the end of the game, the worst team in in, in the Western Conference ends up 
tying the game and stealing two points that instead of putting you third in the Western Conference, now have you at fifth. Now, we're still doing the, the, the playoffs at one versus eight. Is that two versus is – that, is that how it goes in the playoffs? We've added the eight nine. There's a there's an oh, eight, eight nine. nine. Right? Yeah, there's an eight nine play in now, and then after that, it's survivor of the eight nine gets the one seven two six three three six four five and five at four. Yeah. So technically, you're going to go against the Rapids if, if everything stands as it is now, right? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. So so all in all, I just don't think this team has enough to compete against the top teams of the Western Conference. I'll be blunt and I'll be, honestly, uh, I don't know how you call it. I, I, oh, come on. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? So th that, that's just the reality of it. And uh, the, the, the team's DP, which is Pedro La Vega, you saw him come in yesterday, but he looked in a different page. He, he just didn't seem to mold with the rest of the team. He's so eager to show the team and the fans what he can do because he's been hindered by injuries that there was a couple of times where he got the ball, he could have settled it, driven towards the 18, made a pass, made a better shot, but he just took a first shot trying to make a banger because he's just so eager to try to make a change. So there's just so many components for Seattle that are not there that I just don't think that they have – a chance, if I have to put it, maybe 15% chance that they put it all together, everything comes together, and they make a run and are in the final. But but I just don't see it. All right. Uh, quick uh, quick promo. What are you doing on Gold TV this weekend, uh, Nino? Uh, we do uh, the uh, Primera Liga. I go with the big three, going with Porto, Benfica, I'm sporting. And it's going to be a massive, massive game this weekend. In the Premier League, it's going to be, uh, what is this, uh, Victoria Guimanaes for undefeated. They're going to play, they're going to host Porto. And then they're going to give Porto the first loss of the season. It's going to be a, a street fight, man. It's going to be a street fight, that one. That goes on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So stay tuned for that game, man. That's the game of the weekend, man.